everyone and welcome to another episode of Is It She Thing TV by me Dominique. As you can see, I am in a different location. The light in my bathroom is not working and you know it's just here. Yeah, I'm not happy. But let's just get into this review. I'm going to try and do it as quick as I can, okay, to keep you guys interested. So let's get into this. Welcome to the Love and Hip Hop Atlanta Season 5 Episode 2 review by me Dominique. Let's go. Alright, so we start off with Tommy versus Tierra. So obviously, Tierra shows up to the club to, you know, everyone's surprised because they thought she probably wouldn't have shown up. So she comes through. Obviously, Carly being messy is happy as hell. Tommy gets a run for her money. Tierra comes in. You know, she's she's keeping it classy. She's keeping it nice. You know, she's like, hey, girl. Hey, girl. Hey. Hi. How you doing? And Tommy's like, oh, girl. We good. How are you? And she's like, I'm good, you know. Like, I got two jobs, you know. <laughs> I don't need no man, you know. I got two jobs, you know. Waitressing, I just do that shit on the side. But you know what I really do? I be working for one of the largest financial firms in the country. That's right. That's what I be doing. And I'm not really, girl. So what do you do? How come you can't tell us what your job title is, huh? But you... Okay. But it's cool. You work in there. That's nice. And Tommy was like, okay, and when are you a mother? And not even I had to grab my pearls. I was like... Okay, now this, she tried it. She tried it, and Tierra looked at her like, girl, do I know you from somewhere? What the feck? And Tommy's like, that's right. When are you a mother? And Tierra's like, oh, girl, I'm sorry. Sorry, what? And she's like, yeah, that's right. Because I've seen your kids before. I'm dead. She's like, how do you know my kids? And she's like, because I know your man. That's right, girl. I be sitting on that dick every night. So obviously, that causes an argument. They go back and forth. They go back and forth. Tommy's, you know, Calm voice just turns into that of a grown ass man. She starts getting hype and going back. And then, next thing I know, Tierra throws a drink in her face. I was here for Tierra, okay? Tommy was being thirsty. She needed a drink. All right? And then, next thing I know, they are just hands are flying. Tommy got a few punches in. Security comes. Um, yeah, apparently there was like, you know, ass, titties, vagina out. I didn't see it. But, you know, the rest of the people in the party were like, <laughs> Meanwhile, Mimi's like, who are these bitches running amok in my palace? What the fuck is this? Okay, but anyway, moving on, guys. So, Kirk and Rashida. Who cares? Nobody. I don't care. They've moved into a condo because they're new. They're, I don't care. No one cares. Moving on. So, Tierra then goes to visit Scrap in the studio, who is laying down uh, some music with his brother. It just sounds like shouting. Anyway, she goes to the studio and she confronts him. She comes through with a bandage, a burp, like a finger cross. I was like, girl, was it that deep? Did that... Okay. And then Scrap's like, damn, what happened to you? And she's like, your fucking side bitch did this shit. <laughs> okay? I work for a financial company. I can't be going to work like this. So what? So, so what? You sleeping with a bitch, huh? Tommy? Is that her name? That's her name? Is that what you're doing? What about us? Huh? Because I thought we were working shit out. You know? We've been fucking. But apparently not. So what is it? And Scrap's like, I mean, you know, alright, look, I have been sleeping with her. I have. I have. But it's like, you know, it's just, and she's like, I don't want to hear that shit. I don't want to hear that shit. She starts slapping him. Doing all this stuff, and he's a gentleman about it, okay? He, he he doesn't get angry. He's calm, and I like that about Scrap, okay? Even though he's messy as hell. But, you know, she starts throwing shit at him and just hitting him, and she's like, that's it. You're not seeing your son until you get this sorted. And I'm like, please don't be one of those bitches, okay? You already have four damn kids. Four kids. She don't look like she has four kids, does she? She's really gorgeous, guys. Tiara's beautiful anyway, okay? But I'm just like, come on now, you... Don't hold his child against him. Don't use the child in this. And even he was like, uh, you know, the child's innocent in this. What are you doing? He's like, I don't give a fuck. Okay, you were not seeing your child until you sh you sort this shit out. He was like, okay, I'll talk to I'll talk to Tommy. I'll do that. And he got his hair done. Okay, his hair was looking replenished, rejuvenated, resuscitated, revived. His his hair was just looking alive. Okay, all right, moving on. Mimi. So, Mimi's moving new house. She has Ariane and Chris, her girlfriend, over. And basically, guys, they get into this whole conversation. 
<laughs> Let me read my notes, okay? So this whole conversation about, so the question is Mimi gay surfaces, okay? Is Mimi gay? Mimi, according to Mimi, guys, Mimi is not gay. Yeah, that's right. She's dating a female, but she's not gay because, you know, she identifies as a female, whereas Chris identifies as a man, even though Chris is a woman, but Chris identifies as a man, therefore she's not gay. Look, we can talk about all the technicalities and all that shit, alright? But from the time you are with someone that has a pair of titties and a vagina, you are gay. I'm sorry, like, I don't like labelling people, okay? Because everyone connects differently, you know? People, I understand that, I get it. But sometimes you you just gotta label a motherfucker, okay? Because some people be trying it. Like, oh, I be licking vagina, but I'm not gay. I'm not gay. I like vagina, though, but I'm not gay. I'm not gay. No, no, no. You, yeah, you're, you're gay. All right? So that's what's going on there. Meanwhile, Chris, yeah, she really identifies as a man. And I'm just like, okay, I get it. Because, you know, I, I know all about the LGBT community, you know. I, I love them and everything, you know, I've watched FTM transitions, MTF transitions, all of that, I get it, all right, and some people really do feel that way, and it's understandable, however, Chris, I don't know, because you still look like a woman to me, so with you trying to say that you're a guy, it's just, no, no, I'm not, no, 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 I mean, like, I'm, Base, can, can we get some base in your voice? She said she doesn't want to be on any hormones. I get it, but you can't. Okay. All right. All right. And then, you know, Chris starts talking about how she's a touch me not. And I'm like, damn, really? So, yeah, Mimi's just living her life. Okay. She's, she's not gay. And she's with a female that identifies as a male. So she's really not gay. And she's getting it. She's getting her vagina eaten. She's getting her titties sucked. She's getting her ass slapped. And she don't even have to do the same shit back because Chris is a touch me not. Okay? And for those who don't know what touch me not is, touch me nots are basically lesbians that don't want to be touched sexually. Alright? They want to do all the sexual pleasing to their whoever they're doing it to, but don't touch them. Because you you you'll get your ass popped, okay? <laughs> don't touch them. Don't touch the titties, don't touch the ass, don't touch the vagina, just don't do it. They don't want to be pleasured. Physically, don't touch it, just don't. All right, I can't complain, all right, Mimi. Get you, but I don't know. Okay. And you know, Ariana's just there asking questions. You know, she's feeding off this shit because she's been trying to turn Mimi off for the longest. Okay, she's like, So, how would I fuck? Do you fuck? How you doing? I'm like, Ariana, girl, you better go get you your DJ girlfriend and go and get you some, okay? Leave these people be. All right, but. More power to Chris and Mimi. All right, moving on. D. Smith. Speaking of the LGBT community, we get introduced to D. Smith, who is absolutely gorgeous in my opinion and is giving me every bit of Grace Jones, who I live for, okay? Oh, when I'm near, you're gonna fuck. <laughs> After the bus. After the bus. Bus. Okay? Yeah, she looks like Grace Jones and she's absolutely gorgeous. So she's kind of a model, but she don't want to be a model. Anyway, the ladies, Mimi, Tammy, and Rashida go to a fashion show in which D. Smith makes her debut. And Tammy's here for it. We also see Bambi, so she's still, she's still around. Anyway, Tammy likes what she sees from D. Smith, okay? So she wants D. Smith to model for her fashion line. Meanwhile, after that fashion show, D. Smith goes to meet up with her BFF, Betty Boop. Okay, <sighs> guys, I'm, I'm gonna need Betty to go somewhere very far and not return. She's doing too much. She's like Cardi B, that's not her name. She's like Carly Red on fucking cocaine and acid. Like, she's too, she's doing too fucking much. She's too much. What's with that voice? You know, Scrap, you know Scrappy, right? Yeah, he asked me to, I don't know, like, um, do a hook on his track and, you know, I want to see what's popping. And D. Smith is like, Scrappy, I mean, working with him is just going to lower your stock value. I was like, oh, girl, you tried it, but I'm here for it, okay? But anyway, whatever her name is, Betty Boop has a problem with everyone, okay? She has an issue with everybody. 
Alright, so yeah. And then, you know, she's like, speaking of Scrappy, I hate his girlfriend Bambi, okay? And you know what? Bambi seems to fuck around with this bitch called Tammy, and I don't like her ass too because her man, Waka, has said some homophobic shit, and I'm not here for it. So she starts telling D Smith that, and D Smith's like, oh, okay, all right. The fuck have I got myself into? All right, so, um, yeah. After that, you know, Tammy finally reaches out to um, D Smith and they meet with each other. And basically, D Smith just puts it out there. She says, Look, <laughs> I don't know about modeling for your fashion night because I had heard, you know, some things that your husband said, okay? And I don't obviously agree with it. And Tammy's like, Look, I can't speak for my husband. But what I will say is, he didn't mean it in that way. He was just talking about the whole situation with Bruce Jenner, which I, oh, sorry, sorry, no. Not Bruce Jenner no longer. What's the, what's your name? Caitlyn. Caitlyn. Caitlyn Jenner. That's the name. Right. Okay. Yes, everyone was irritated by Caitlyn. Okay. You guys made a, such a fucking big deal out of it. Like to say half the world isn't going through transition. Why the fuck do we need to give a fuck about Caitlyn motherfucking Jenner? Oh, sorry. All right. Because that shit pissed me off too. So I get where Waka was coming from. However, I also understand that Waka probably did say some very um inappropriate kind of um hurtful shit. Okay, so yes, D Smith is has every right to have her reservations. However, Tammy handled it perfectly. She can't speak for her husband and she still wants to work with D Smith no matter what. So you know, D Smith then tells her, Look, I'm transitioning. And Tammy's like, What do you mean? And she's like, from male to female. And Tammy was like, Oh shit, bitch, you look good. I don't give a fuck. You still want to model for me? Okay, because I want you to mop talk for me. And I'm like, yes, because D Smith looks probably better than most of these bitches. Okay, she looks good. I need to see how she looks as a man, because I don't see it at all. She just has a strong jawline, but she looks fabulous. I love her. I love it. The voice, everything. Yes. Okay? But yeah, Tammy doesn't care. She still wants her. Moving on, guys. Karen King and that damn dog of hers. Karen, I'm, I'm not... <sighs> This whole black mafia family type bullshit is just... <laughs> Y'all gonna be sleeping with the catfishes. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. I can say I'm black too. Okay? Anyway. Karen King obviously meets with her little protege, Tommy. And Tommy reports back. You know, she's like, yeah, you know, so I did what you told me to do. Mm-hmm. And that bitch threw a drink at me. And Karen's like, oh, she did, did she? See, I don't fuck with that bitch. I don't fuck with Tiara. And I'll tell you why. That bitch ratted me and my family out to the cops. That's right. We thought we were family. You know? It had been reported that my sons and I beat up Sass's father. And, you know, the cops got involved when boys got arrested. And I went on a run. That's right. I ran. And I was doing good. I was doing pretty good until Tiara ratted me out. She was telling the cops where I was and shit. I don't fuck with that bitch. That bitch just gotta go. And Tommy's like, yeah, so, you know, next time I see that bitch, it's on. And Cameron's like, mm -hmm. I can't wait. Grussell girl gang casting call. Long story short, Jock finally gets the assistance number. Meanwhile, Scrappy's chilling and in walks Kirk, okay? Looking like midnight. <laughs> Kirk comes through. And um, Scrappy ain't here for him, okay? But first of all, before um, they even kind of talk about it, Kirk tells Scrappy that his mum paid a visit to Rashida's boutique. And Scrappy's like, what? And mum was just sitting there like... And Kirk was like, yeah, that's right. You know, she she came to the store. She she laid an egg. I don't know. She just did some shit. And Scrappy's like, mama. And she's like, I mean, when you breathe and I breathe, I feel it. You know, when you were in my room, I felt it. So mama's gonna do what mama's gonna do. Oh, yeah, mama D, let this shit go. Let, <laughs> let this shit go. It's been five fucking seasons now. Let it go. Okay? That guy is down there. How old is he? He's past 30. He ain't been in your womb for over 30 years. Let it go. Damn. He's a big boy now. Okay. But anyway, 
Kirby just isn't here for the bullshit, all right? He's like, look, I don't know what you're doing here, Kirk. Okay, you couldn't show up to the court. So why you won't be here now? Why are you here? And Kirk's like, well, damn, Scrap. I mean, look, we didn't know Rosewood was going. He was like, why didn't you let me know the day before? I showed up to court waiting on your ass and you couldn't even tell me. It was like, well, on the road, like, I didn't really want to be there in the first place. And Scott was like, oh, no, you didn't. And, you know, yeah, Kirk and Rashida didn't really want to be there because, obviously, they didn't want to testify against Erica. But, you know, he said, she said, okay, they could have called him beforehand to let him know that he, they won't be there, but they didn't. Mm, ah, whatever. I don't care. Scrappy is not fucking with Kirk no more. So we move on. All right? So then, speaking of Scrap, the other Scrap, okay, he goes to Tommy's house for the most, <laughs> hold on please, hold on, hold on, hold on, Tiana mentioned that Tommy has 32 mugshots, yes, and I saw the picture, the girl has been in and out of jail since 2002, <laughs> day day, that crazy bitch out there again, that shit just ran in my head like, like, Tommy's crazy as fuck. That's probably why Karen likes her so much. 32 mugshots. For where? Damn. Anyway, so Scrap goes to Tommy's house. Meanwhile, Tommy is giving off every bit of Yvette from Baby Boy, okay? She's laying up on the couch in them tight-ass fucking gym clothes or whatever she has on, reading through magazines she ain't even reading through, snapping the pages like... And then the doorbell rings or, you know, Scrap knocks on the door. She's like, who is it? Who's that girl? Girl, who are you auditioning for? Because you are giving us every bit of an Academy Award winner performance here. What the fuck is, who, are, who answers the damn door like that? Huh? What is you doing? Why was you flicking through the pages so damn hard? Bitch, you lucky you ain't getting paper cut. All right. So anyway, Scrap is like, it's me, it's me. And then she comes to the door, she opens up the peephole. She's like... Uh, get your black ass in here. He gives her some flowers. She's like, oh, thank you. Drops it to the phone. Like, you're doing too much. Okay? So then she goes over to the sink, and he's like, look, I mean, what's up? What's wrong with you? And she's like, what the fuck? So you need to tell me all this time you've been fucking your baby mama? What is going on? Scrap, what is going on? Why didn't you tell her about me? Are you still fucking her? And Scrap was like, look, <laughs> all right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I am. I am still fucking her. That's what, that, yeah, yeah. And she's like, get out. You know, because I can't do this shit. I can't do this shit. And he was like, you know what? I'm going to give you some time to, you know, calm down. Okay? I'm going to give you some time to calm down. She starts throwing his flowers, like, taking off every petal. He's like, no, I'm going to go. And then she's like, I mean, I just don't want you to go. At least let me walk you to the door. Because I just want to I'm like. What the, what the hell was that? She went from 100 to 0 in like 0 0.2 seconds. She was turned up, ready to beat his ass with the flowers, and then she starts crying. She's like, I mean, I just don't want you to go. Let me walk you to the door. And I'm like, damn, Scrap's looking at her like, this bitch is crazy. Fuck, I'm so turned on right now. I'm like, I can't deal with this shit. All right, so then he hugs her. He's like, man, I don't want to see you cry. I don't want to see you cry. She's like, me. So what are you going to do? What's the next step? And he's like, look, I'm going to need y'all to just get together, okay? I'm going to try and get y'all together so we can sort this out and blah, 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 blah. All right, basically, he ain't full of shit. He's full of shit. All right, he's, he's pillow talking both ladies. He's telling both of them what they want to hear. All right, and obviously, we know this shit's all going to blow up. Okay. <laughs> all right, so then, yeah, that was basically it. Moving on to the final part, D. Smith finally, you know, accepts Tammy's offer, kind of. And she brings her best friend, Betty Boop, along. Actually, no, she didn't accept the offer, but she thought Betty Boop would be a better fit. So she brings Betty Boop along, not knowing that, you know, Betty... Actually, no, she did know. She did know that Betty still wasn't here for Tammy. However, she was trying to kind of change Betty's mind, okay? So Betty's sitting there with her little... Captain America hat on or whatever, some shit. She's just sitting there. Tammy comes through all jovial and nice. She's like, hey, hi, how are you? Hi. Okay, they start sitting down. Betty has this stank ass attitude already. This bitch. I'm, ugh. Ugh. Her 
Her name's not Betty Boop, is it? What is her name? Betty I I don't know. I don't know. I don't give a fuck, okay? Basically, Betty is Betty isn't here for Tammy. Alright? She ain't here for Tammy. She doesn't care what Tammy has to say. She ain't here for her. So then, as I get to talking, she just brings up the whole interview, okay? She's like, oh, I saw your husband's interview. And Tammy's like, oh, okay, what did you think about it? And Betty was like, I didn't like it. Sorry. I didn't like it. Okay, I thought what he said was very ignorant. He's very ignorant. And I'm just like, ugh. And Tammy's like, okay, well, to each his own. Because I'm not going to defend this shit again, okay? Everyone has their own opinion. So whatever. All right, so then... Tammy continues to try and keep it business. However, Betty's still kind of coming for her, right? So what does Betty say? Betty starts talking about how Tammy's irrelevant. She's like, I mean, what? how are you relevant? And Tammy's like, excuse me? And and Betty's like, yeah, how are you relevant? What's your relevancy? And Tammy's like, bitch, and who are you? And Betty's like, bitch, Google me. I'm like, Betty, ain't nobody gonna Google you. Don't nobody know what the fuck you is. Okay. No. All right? And Betty's like, oh, this bitch thinks she's the shit just because she married to Waka. She married to what? I'm like, who was you married to, though? Nobody. Stop. Okay? They start going back and forth. And then <laughs> Betty starts speaking Spanish. She's like, Espanol, ele cata, benete, la mia cata, la cata, la cata, la cata, la cata, que pasa? And then Tony's like, bitch, what the fuck you just said to me? And then Betty's like, bitch, I'm not even Spanish, okay? And Tony's like, but bitch, I'm half. Ugh. And she's like, well, then you should have known what the fuck I just said. And I'm like, what is this argument about? Okay, D Smith is sitting there like, um, <laughs> um, um, about to go back and forth. Next thing I know, Tammy gets up and basically comes for that bitch. Okay, she's, I don't know, she slaps her, throws a drink at her. All I know is, Tammy, please get this girl. Please get her the fuck out of here because she's doing too damn much. Okay, all right, too damn much. But guys, that was it. This episode was entertaining. I can't wait for the next episode. I had fun. Yes, I love this season so far. It's very, it's very dramatic. It's so over the top, but you've got to love it. So, guys, please make sure to comment, like, subscribe. Thank you for watching. And I will see you next time, okay? Bye. Okay, bye. <laughs>